Hey guys, David here and welcome to the FitPro Daily. So for us here, we've got one week to go until we finally get to open, which means we're really up in our social media game. So I thought, why not make this whole week all about social media and really help you get started? And it starts off the perfect way. We're inviting Josh Merlin on. He's the guy that owns UKPT's Facebook group. It's got over 10,000 FitPros on there. And we're gonna talk about how he's managed to grow it, plus now how he's about to monetize, how to monetize a free group. But before we dive into this week's guest episode, if you're brand new to this channel, don't forget you can always subscribe by clicking that big red button below and you, check, uh, and you can also check out some of the other videos we have on the, le on the left hand side here. Anyway, straight into this week's guest interview. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode. This week, we have Josh. And if you don't know who Josh is, you need to get back on Facebook and look for UK PT's group. Is there 10,000 fit pros in there now? Uh, just under 14 now, 14,000. Wow, yeah. I remember when you put the 10,000 one post just a few weeks back, and that's, it's flown up since then. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, so we'll just find out a little bit more about how you grew the group from well for zero to 14,000 how you're starting to monetize it now as well and then see how that can benefit the fit for those watching and listening but before we dive into that how did you get into the fitness industry yourself then so <clears throat> at the age of 14 I started doing karate and um, I was like I'm, I'm 18 stone nine at the moment but back then I was super skinny like like insane like a rake you know arms like this so um i started lifting weights at school to uh, get stronger and more powerful for when i was fighting and then that led me to go to just carry on going to the gym through you know like year 10 year 11 and all through college um doing a variety of sports and stuff as well and then i went to college to do a levels initially like law business studies all that sort of stuff and i hated it it was just I, I actually, my psychology uh, teacher diagnosed me at the time with body dysmorphia because I actually missed an AS exam to go to the gym because it was chest day and I didn't want to miss my session, <laughs> which was looking back now, that's just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, and then I got offered the chance to do a free level two gym instructor course at college. And then, so I, I jumped on that and then Pretty much immediately, the college offered me a job in the gym, just like around my studies. And then another school offered me a job, so I went over there. And then a random job came up for LA Fitness, you know, gym instructor position, which they don't really have anymore. So I did that for two years. And then um, I got qualified doing like a, an MVQ kind of internship as a PT. And then... <laughs> I jumped straight in at the deep end and I went to, I was still at LA Fitness at this point and I became one of their personal trainers, but I had to pay 830 pounds a month rent, wow. fully self-employed at the age of like, I was probably 18 at this point, mm. never run a business or anything. And that was like a baptism fire, you know, but I loved it. I was busy. I was only one of three personal trainers. So, you know, fully booked all the time and did that for a few years and then, in 2010, I started teaching courses and then uh, that's been it really since then and just doing various bits and pieces since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I kind of see some bits that you're doing. So you've got like your online courses and you do workshops and stuff and you do some yep. stuff like that and all that type of stuff. So that's really interesting. So for the people maybe watching this who are in the commercial gym right now, what kind of tips or tricks would you give to them on generating leads while they're in a commercial gym? So in a commercial gym, the thing that I really had to my advantage at the time, and I think anyone can do it, it's just I was, I had the advantage, but I didn't know that I had it, was where I'd been a gym instructor for, for two years or, or a, a year and a half, everybody knew me. So as soon as I put on the different colored t-shirt, everyone was like, oh my God, Josh is a PT. And, um, you know, then I, I walked around the gym floor and I knew everybody. So I smiled at them. I knew their names and I said hello to everyone. Um, mm -hmm not necessarily to go straight into a sales pitch. Um, that was the case sometimes, but generally it was just, hi, how you doing? 
how's training? And then they'd tell me and I'd leave. But it was those touch points, those repeated contacts that would build the rapport that then when they did have a problem, they'd come to me to, to help solve it. And then the other thing I would say is, so, you know, building rapport with the members, saying hello to everyone, being super friendly, being super approachable, don't always hard sell. And then the thing that I've done as well, quite well before in commercial gyms is offering value. So if you look at the demographic of your gym, I don't, some people aren't allowed to do this, but if you, if you could have a, a complete database of all the gym's members, and you could break it down into percentages of, of um, age groups and male and female, times that they train, all that sort of stuff. I guarantee you could put on a, a free workshop, let's say um, the fundamentals of weightlifting or, or the fundamentals of, of barbell training where you spend two hours and you show them seven, uh, let's say seven barbell exercises perfectly and you give them you know, a, a little downloadable pack or a little email that says, right, here are the videos, here are the teaching points. Do that free of charge and use that as a lead magnet. Pretty much like you would with a website lead magnet, but you've just got to find ways to give value in the gym rather than say downloading a PDF. And that is the biggest struggle. And even the longest of fit pros who've been going, they think when somebody new comes in, they can go in for the kill straight away and make that sale. But we yeah. have it over and over and over again. We've both of us have been going for such a long time. Now you just have to start those conversations and just keep, delivering value and value and value exactly and i mean I, I was quite lucky if you look at it in a bit of a strange way that um i had nothing like with my with my business then compared to what we could do now it would be a completely different ball game because i literally had a clipboard uh, an a4 diary and a pen and that was it like yeah, so yeah. I, i'd go around the gym and be like oh would you like a free training session yeah okay i'll book you in and put it in my diary and then like that was my only way of collecting lead data and you know i had no email campaigns and the amount of stuff you can do for free now and the amount of booking software you can use to capture data and make yourself look really professional recipe books like all this stuff is just you know personal trainers need to maximize what they can offer to make them actually look like a professional <laughs> and the flip side to that though i know back in the day there was not much available but now it feels like there's almost too much and people just get so overwhelmed when they reach out to us and say, do you need a lead magnet, a landing page, Facebook ads, Google ads, websites, membership sites, and all this stuff. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Go back to the basics. Just start, it's that thing, what you're saying, same thing you said, just start those conversations, no matter if it's a text message or phone call or email, and just get to know the clients, you know, get to know the prospects. Exactly. And I think the other thing is like, um, if I could go back now to be 18 and, and be in that gym role, the first thing I would have spent my money on rather than going on the next kettlebell course or the next whatever, I would have booked in some proper sales training. Um, <clears throat> because my, my closing rate was really, really, really good because I knew everybody. And it was just a case of, you know, speak to them about their goals. They know they already know me. They like me. They trust me. All that stuff was already covered. So really it was just a case of finalizing the price and it was a pretty well off gym. So that normally wasn't a problem anyway, but I then went to um, a Virgin active shortly after and I was only there six months cause I hated it because I didn't know anyone. There were like 15 personal trainers and I realized that I didn't really have a, a sales system i had a consultation system which was fine you know do the park you do the lifestyle nutrition whatever but when it came to actually closing the sale i really really struggled mm. so um if i could go back and do everything differently the first thing i would do is get proper sales training that would be my priority yes that's just key and this kind of takes us nicely into what we want to talk about today is the facebook free group because we've talked about starting conversations and keeping clients warm. When you work in a commercial gym, you're seeing people all the time say, hey, how's it going? Just have general chit chat. But if you're online or you work in a gym like I've got and you don't have people coming in all the time, a Facebook group or a Facebook free group is, wow, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go into more detail in how great Facebook free groups are. Of course, no worries. So <clears throat> I think the thing that has to um, be stated initially 
is that Facebook groups for free are really, really good, but people make two kind of key errors, in my opinion. Uh, number one is they keep everything on Facebook's platform. So they don't drive people to a data collection point. For example, when people sign up to UKPTs, there is a, um, a WooFoo form that they can fill in, just a member survey saying, what information do you want to see? How do you want it delivered? Etc. But it's a way for us to capture their data. We don't really use that data, but it's there. So yep, if yep. Facebook all of a sudden goes, right, off you go, then we've got that data, at least some of it, to kind of you know, keep us going. Um, the second mistake that I see a lot of people make with free groups is they initially, same as personal training face-to-face, is they initially go for the sale and the hard pitch straight away. So the free Facebook group should be an extended arm of your value adding services or information. So that's, and then the sales can be promoted a little bit later on and they will come up organically as well. Um, But with my group, for example, it started in, I think it was 2013. And it was literally just a group for my ex students from when I was working at a large training company and it started off as 20 or 30 students. And then they were asking questions. I thought, you know what, this could really help other personal trainers. This could help other fit pros um, with their businesses and with everything really best practice for training, whatever. So um, I started finding local personal trainers and just, I would message them first and I would just say, look, I've got this group. I think you might like it. It's going to be really useful. Can I add you in? And they, they pretty much, you know, 99% of the time say yes. I can't really think of anyone that said no, to be honest. And um, that's how it started to grow. And then we put in place some things to promote the growth of the group. So every month I would post up a thing saying, you know, look, this is helping you guys. Can you just see it and just add your personal training friends into the group? Um, and that, that really helped it grow. And now because of the amount of value and because I kept it relatively pitch free, the group is now growing organically at an, just an extreme rate. I think it's a hundred people a week that are joining roughly. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just under 14,000. I think we're at 13, seven at the moment. So we'll hit 14,000 by the end of next month. Easy, crazy times. <laughs> Let's start, let's start with that then. Obviously, if people don't know how to create a group, you literally just log on to Facebook, you click probably the top right-hand corner and a new group will pop up and click that. So people have created a group. Would you have any names or any suggestions on names? So let's say I've just moved to Cardiff. Uh, I want to set up my own personal training business here in Cardiff. I'm creating a Facebook group. What type of names should I be calling my, my Facebook group? So I would look at the probably two things. What is your niche market if you have one? So let's say, for example, <clears throat> you train um, you train people for fat loss. Let's just say that generically. Then something like Cardiff Cardiff Fat Loss Group, mm-hmm. something really simple like that, is going to show people immediately what they're in for when they join the group and what they're looking for. But also the, the second thing to consider that that covers is the search terms. So I see a lot of people that put in things like, you know, uh, X, Y, Z, personal training, member support group. People aren't going to be searching that generally. You're not going to get cold people coming into your group because of that. And that's actually why I chose the group name UKPTs because UK personal trainers, there's, you know, there's a shit ton of us. (laughs) There's, um, so yeah, I would say choose a name that resonates with your audience of what they're actually looking to achieve. Um, you could go quite, quite broad with it and go to, you know, Cardiff, Cardiff health, fitness and wellness, for example, or you could start to niche down and then just remember that it's all about search terms really on Facebook. Okay. So when I've, I've got my group now, I've named it. How do I then start getting people into the group? Maybe it's a, we don't know anybody. How do I really just start getting people to come in? So it depends on on how sneaky you want to be um depends on the groups that you're already in Mm. what i would probably do is start joining any local groups that are very similar to your one and start adding value in their groups 
commenting and starting to get to know people in the, in the local area. And then this is where it gets a bit sneaky if you need it to, is you could then start adding those people and saying, oh, hey, you know, I've just started this group. I thought you might like it. Would you like to come and join? Um, if not, they may start to do it organically. But again, you could put it in your Facebook bio and then add them as a friend. You could do uh, Facebook ads for people to join your groups, which is something we're looking at doing soon. Um, the other option is just, you could just cold add people on Facebook and then message them and say, look, I've seen you in my local area. I've got this group. Would you like to join? Hmm. Obviously, if it's something like Cardiff fat loss, that could be misconstrued as offensive if someone's like, you're calling me fat. <laughs> so yeah, that, that would be my first. If you literally knew no one, okay, I would... So go to the flip end then. We've got quite a few people in there. You've got a couple of your clients in there. You've got a few other local people. How, how, can, we, how can we leverage them then to help us fill the group with their support then? So I think it's kind of like... Um, when you have your personal training business and they say referrals will only come when you ask for them. Like if you don't ask, you don't get, and I think that's very true with, with this scenario as well, that I think you would need to start asking those members as long as they're getting value. If you ask them that, do you know anyone else that would love to be in this group? They should know similar people to themselves that are also in that, in that area. Um, again, sometimes it's difficult if it is based on a, a location, but you know, UK PTs, we've got people in from Australia, New Zealand and whatever, they still add value and they still get benefit. So there's no reason why people can't add their friends in that aren't from, say, Cardiff. Um, so yeah, I, I would literally just once a, once a month, maybe once a fortnight, I would say to everyone, you know, hi guys, um, we're looking to grow the group so that we can add more value, we can get better uh, group power. You know, we can ask for discounts at local venues and stuff like that please add in any of your friends. Uh, and I would generally do that by video as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we were, we're getting people requesting to join a group, maybe two or three new people every single week. Is there some sort of thing we put in place when somebody joins? I know you mentioned it with the Wufu form. Is there any sort of key practice or things we should be doing when we accept people initially? So a um, couple of things that I do at the moment. So we have the group rules. So when you set up the group, it asks you, do you want people to accept the rules of your group? So you can put something like, you know, don't be a dick, um, don't spam the group, no multi-level marketing, stuff like that. And they, as they join, they just click accept. Um, there are some instances when people don't, you know, and I'll let them in anyway, uh, because I can see they're a personal trainer, but it's just to get rid of any bots and spam yeah. accounts, yeah. which is just ridiculous. Sometimes we get, you know, like 200 people trying to join in one day and that you can see they're all spam accounts and they've clearly just gone, quick, get in. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then, so we've got the group rules and then within the actual, um, you can do like a welcome post, which is every time. So I, I let people in every Monday. So every Monday I accept all the membership requests that are legitimate. And then I, it, there's a little button that says, um, welcome your new members. So you click that it tags everybody you've added that week. And then just as the first comment, I put, right, guys, you know, here are the group rules. Here's my welcome video. Here's our Wufu form and here's PT Toolbox. Like, check these four things out. And not everybody does, but it just gives them that welcome into the group um, so they feel like they're a new member, like they feel welcomed. But then also it's prompting them again to, to read the rules, to check out the, um, the pinned posts, stuff like that. So they're kind of the things that I would do initially uh to kind of screen and vet and, and kind of best practice yeah, yeah, yeah. so okay yeah so it's going quite well now then so we've got our group we've got members coming in we've kind of welcomed them and got them ready uh, how often should we be selling in the group or is that not really the aim of the group to begin um, that's a tough one it depends on it depends on your business really and, and what kind of products you have for sale so I'm relatively lucky that the PT toolbox, which is one of my businesses is like an online university for personal trainers. And for example, one of the sections we have is called resources and downloads, which has got a load of forms in, you know, nutrition forms and whatever, and people can download those and then brand them as their own. So that comes up quite organically where people say, Oh, where can I get a new um, COVID-19 risk assessment? And I say, here you go. Here's the link. 
boom, and that's it. And then that's the sale, generally. Um, however, I think if you were to post too often, you're going to put people off. I mean, again, it's hard to say because it depends on the business, but once a week, once a fortnight, maybe doing a post just highlighting your services. But I would recommend instead of saying, here, buy my shit, buy my shit, I would prefer that people use something like a video testimonial and say, oh, hey, guys, this is one of my clients, Brenda. I just thought you'd like to see what she thinks about, you know, our serve or, you know, our product. This is her result so far. You know, everyone say, well done. And then you tag her in it and then everyone can say, well done. And that's kind of a bit of a guerrilla way of doing it, guerrilla marketing. <laughs> You're in, indirectly offering your service by showing the results, but not exactly saying buy it. They'll want to know more because they've seen it, yeah. Because you want to keep it as, as um, you want to prevent people's barriers from going up. Yeah. Because as soon as, as, soon as um, someone tries to hard sell me, unless I'm really, really, really interested. Like I bought a new car a couple of weeks ago and the guy was like, this is how much the price is. I was like, cool. I mean, done. Like I'll transfer the money now. Um, because I wanted that car <laughs> and I wasn't leaving without it basically. But as soon as someone hard sells me, I switch off, you know, because I get it all the time. I get it on LinkedIn. I get it on Facebook Messenger. I get it in groups. People going, oh, you know, we do this, this, and this. Just, you know, if you sign up today, we'll do it for X amount discount. And I'm like, I don't even know who this person is. It's their first message to me. It's a cold message. Uh, it just pisses me off. Did you see so my post this morning, did you? No, no, I didn't know. I was exactly that. At the top, I was like, I'm really sorry. I've been doing marketing all wrong. This is how you do it. Add a friend, send them, sell them to buy straight away. So. I know, right? <laughs> it's just... Okay. Go on. So things are going well. We've got the group. It's starting to fill up nicely. We're welcoming people in. We know now how to kind of make or offer products and stuff. What other content are we putting in there then if we're not always putting sales posts in there? So... Um... Some of the stuff we like to do is live Q and A's. That's, that's really, really good. If you've got a special, if you are the specialist in a certain topic, um, but then also guest Q and A's as well. So for example, we get, you know, if we've had like accountants, um, solicitors, stuff like that, come into the group and do Facebook lives to help the, um, some of the issues that are way, way, way beyond my scope of practice. So I'm definitely not an accountant. Um, and then I have giveaways as well. They work really, really well. Um, you could do member spotlights, which are focusing on someone that's, you know, listened to the advice of the group and has had a really, really good result. Um, blah, 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 competitions. Uh, we also do some like fun, fun stuff, like just, just joking around, posting memes, posting achievements, I sometimes even just post, you know, like my, um, I posted one the other day, which was just my to-do list that I use or have been using during lockdown. And that had loads of engagement because I just put up there, you know, this is how I run my day. And it's just, honestly, it, it does depend on the group that you run. So obviously UK PTs is very, it's business and it's professional. So I wouldn't post up like, oh my God, this is my chicken and broccoli. Oh my God, guys, welcome. Like, I'm not going to be like a, you know, fitness influencer style Instagram, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, all that bullshit. Um, but in a group where you were, say, the personal trainer and everyone's a, a potential client, then that stuff may resonate with them. So if we were looking from the, from the personal trainer's perspective, what I would do is grab a big piece of paper, write down some topics such as uh, training, lifestyle, nutrition, maybe wellness, mindset, supplementation, uh, equipment. And then I would do a brainstorm and say, right, around uh, nutrition, I can talk about hydration, I can talk about calories, carbs, protein, fats, fiber, fruit and veg selection, meals on the go, how to eat when you're out of the house. And then I would just plan content around that stuff because people get nervous and I, I still do it now. I, I still post content and I think, fuck, what if no one likes it? Like what if, what if people start to post negative stuff? And I get that, I still get that now, and I've been a personal trainer since 2007. And, but the thing is, you're X amount of steps ahead of your clients and ahead of your potential clients. So I think that even if you posted up and said, right, do you know what? 
I, in fact, I posted up a picture of this with the equation to work out your hydration and people loved it. And, you know, just simple stuff like that. If you can add value to a couple of people, then your jobs are good. <laughs> I know that's good. So then how often should we post every day, do you reckon, then to kind of build that trust and value? See, again, it depends. This one depends more on the size and the interaction of the group. So now I really don't post that off. I, I don't worry about how much I post in UK PTs because once you get to a certain point, it's self-perpetuating because the members of the group are posting questions and they're the ones that are driving the content forward. So then I just add in what I need to, to, to achieve my goals, which at the moment is selling Peter Toolbox membership discreetly. Um, so I would say if, if you can post daily, that would be um, really, really good. However, a caveat to that is I think too many uh, fitness professionals and business owners in general focus on doing the best they can rather than doing what they can. So people see Gary Vaynerchuk putting out 7 million videos a day and they're like, shit, I need to get a full-time videographer and all this stuff. Like if you can only post three times a week, post three times a week, but make that content amazing. Yeah. If you can post once a week, it's going to be better than none. Do you know what I mean? So I think, it, it's hard to say. I mean, ideally every day because it would keep you fresh in people's minds. And they, they say that, you know, sometimes with email marketing as well, you know, message, uh, email every day. But again, it's what works for you and what works for your audience. And you'll soon find out what works and what doesn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All the likes and the ones that get nothing, you're like, okay, maybe we won't talk about that again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think most people forget that community, uh, the group is more about building a community people getting to know each other, building that trust. So you, you're not authority and everyone like has to abide by you, but it's good fun. People make friends and they communicate. And just from your group itself, the amount of people who I've become friends with or had chats with outside of the group because of the group, you need yep. to use it more as a community and build. Just like now during lockdown, you could have built this amazing group. Everyone in Cardiff will get to know each other, feel happy about what's going on and feel more likely to want to come and get fit when the lockdown finishes. Yeah, Exactly. And I think actually you made a really good point then about being like a, a dictator in the group um, or an authority in the group. But so obviously I run the group, but I, I vet every single post that comes into the group, which takes a lot of time. Actually, um, I'd say at least an hour a day. I'm, sitting going through posts and approving them or declining them. And I think one thing to remember is not to be a dictator of the group, but definitely, definitely have standards of behavior and content as well. Because, yes. you know, we have a zero tolerance policy on multi-level marketing. As an example, I just will not tolerate that because there's so many personal trainers that are, that are new to the industry that may get drawn in by Arbon or whatever. So um, yeah, have your, have your standards. <laughs> okay, let's, before we dive into people can find out more about you then, have you got any final tips or words on Facebook groups and building that community and then make monetizing the group itself? So for, so final kind of wrap up for the groups then, um, I would say, like you say, focus on community. Really, really, really your priority has got to be adding value. Once you start to add value, the group should grow organically, but you can give it a nudge by adding in local people. Mm. So I used to do that all the time. I would just add hundreds of people, but I would message them first. And then once you get to a point where the group is growing through referrals like UKPTs, that's when you can start to reach out to businesses. Um, in fact, you could reach out before. Once you get to a considerable amount of people, and that's up to you to decide what that number is, then you could reach out to local businesses and say, look, you're a, health, you're a food prep company in Cardiff. I've got a group here of 250 people that are into fitness. Give us a discount. Give me a commission of 10% per meal sold. So let's say three quid per meal and I'll promote them to your group. And again, you have to make sure because that's part of the monetization uh, plan is, is affiliates. You have to make sure that you actually believe and you trust in the businesses that you're promoting. So it's your name otherwise. Exactly. Exactly. And I had, um, I, <laughs> I had a guy that was like, look, 
I'll pay you two thousand pounds if I can promote my uh, my supplement company to your group for one month. I was like, okay, send me the link and I'll have a look at the website. And it was it was a multi level marketing. Uh, it was Herbalife basically, um, and he was like really high up in Herbalife. And I was like, dude, you can go and do various things to yourself. Um, he was <laughs> slaughtered in the group though. Hundred percent. And I would have been I would have been up two grand. But my reputation equity would have gone right, like would have been absolutely through the floor. Yeah, because everyone would be blaming you. It's like, why, why are you letting this guy post in the group and all that type of exactly. thing? And then one thing that we have done more recently is that um, we don't allow sales posts from business. We don't allow, we allow businesses to be in the group and they can comment if there's a post that is relevant. So if someone says, look, I'm, getting to get my, I'm, I'm looking to get my website redone, have at it like if you build websites then go comment on that that's fine however if people want to actively promote to the group we now have a sponsorship program where people can basically pay to to advertise overtly in the group and that's um it's 25 pound for one post 50 pound for um one post a fortnight or it's 100 pound for a post a week and that's um you know we've got a few businesses doing that but even those guys that pay that money their content still gets vetted and if it doesn't fit with with the overall ethos of the group then i don't accept the money because yeah. it's not worth it long term but what you're saying there is interesting for definitely a lot of fit pros now it's not just about selling your products it's not just yeah here's my here's my group we offer a six week challenge here's the link to come and join so many different ways to leverage and monetize the group from affiliates to other business owners to other people promoting in your group so having all these different small income streams will add up to a lot at the end of the month yeah exactly i mean if you look at that that sponsorship program that we launched it at the end of april and it's already at 500 pound a month recurring so that helps out massively you know that could be and the idea behind that as well being completely transparent that money goes towards us running UK PTs events. It goes towards um, doing Facebook ads to grow the group, getting guest speakers in, getting discounts, giveaways, all that sort of stuff. Mm. So although the money will still be coming to me, it's still for the benefit of the group as a, as a whole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm the car. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So people that are watching this then who don't actually know who you are or don't know about your group or don't know about PT Toolbox, how can they find out a little bit more about you then? So um, probably the easiest place to go to is Facebook, which I'm on most of the time. Uh, so if you just look up Josh Mullen, then we've got uh, the Facebook page for the group is UK PTs. So I think you can just go to facebook.com slash groups slash UK PTs, I believe. But if not, you can just search it in the bar and it will come up. Um, and then again, on Instagram and Facebook, there's the PT Toolbox, which is just at PT Toolbox. Um, I'll be honest, I don't really use that as much as I should. Like I don't, I don't promote myself, my, I don't use my business pages as much as I should. Most of the stuff goes onto my personal social media pages at the moment. So again, if you wanna follow me on Instagram, uh, it's Josh Mullen underscore PT Toolbox, which, um, there's quite a lot of survival training and stuff on there at the moment, which is a bit different, um, like hunting and stuff like that. So <laughs> you're busy during lockdown. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. I mean, just out, just out there, I've got a big bag of like knives and axes and stuff. So <laughs> I'm not a murderer, I promise. Um, yeah. And then the website is just pttoolbox.co.uk. And then we also have, um, South end PT Academy, which is our face to face qualifications. And that's just South end PT Academy. So that's, that's me. So that was Josh. What did you think of the interview? It was really interesting to see how he created it for one purpose and how it's managed to evolve. And this is really the thing with groups. If you create them with a purpose and you produce the content, you give stuff away for free, you deliver value, the group is not only going to keep growing, but these people are going to get to really know, like, and trust you and then want to buy from you. So if you've never created your own free Facebook group, then definitely consider setting one up. It really is going to make a big difference and what we would call it, we'd call it an incubator 
potential leads. Anyway, like I said at the start, this week is all about social media. So don't forget to check out the rest of this week as we talk all things social media. Again, if you're new to the channel, don't forget you can subscribe and don't forget there's loads more videos you can check out just here. Until tomorrow, cheers.